Hi, it is um, 18th of June 2018 and uh, I'm Paul Worrell and I'm founder and chief developer of Zonified. Um, right, today I'm just going to talk a little bit about what our vision was for how the HD wallet would work in the Zonified digital wallet. Remember that it is not a wallet for securing um, crypto assets although it's part of how the product works, um, it's a wallet for securing activities. All right, so uh, what's the HD wallet first? Um, uh, I'm not going to be uh, giving detailed education on this. Um, you should be able to go and find out yourself and I will put links um, below. But there is a specification known as BIP, um, 32, <laughs> 32, okay, and um, it's a Bitcoin improvement proposal, uh, it's very mature, uh, quite old now, and um, Ethereum, uh, which is the world that we're in, shares a, the same uh, heritage, okay, so what Bit32 does, the fundamental advantage of it, or the fundamental proposition, is that um, it enables you to derive public and private key sets um, from one root key. So um, if you started to experience uh, using keys for Bitcoin transactions or Ethereum transactions, you can imagine it gets very, very complicated um, to store and administer independent public private key pairs. So the HD wallet allows you to have um, the ability to generate them in a deterministic way, hence deterministic or D in the HD, and then um, to structure everything in a hierarchy. So you've got a standard structure. And there's also a mechanism for um, sort of naming uh, the different hierarchies uh, to categorize hierarchies of keys for certain purposes or for use in certain types of wallet uh, or with certain types of product, okay? So, um, again, this is what a hierarchy might look like. If you imagine a path on your computer, um, a file system path, and uh, you have a root, uh, they sort of explain it as an M. Uh, the first level under that um, is known as the accounts. Um, the term accounts does get confusing in both the Bitcoin space and the Ethereum space, um, but basically uh, um, it, it's kind of alluding to the fact that under this node would be accounts. And then there's another um, uh, node, if that's okay with you, I'll call it a node. Again, another overused vocabulary. Um, and this technically in Bit32 is called the chain. Um, but if we kind of ignore that at the moment because it confuses things, uh, the point is the next, the next, I'll just put K there, uh, node is actually where you would start to find some uh, public and private key addresses that you can use. Okay, now there's two other advantages of the HD wallet that are really important and uh, bring us to what I wanted to talk about with regards to the Zonified digital wallet. Um, one of them is that for obviously every private key in the hierarchy, if you imagine it, you know, like this, And uh, at any point, you've got the ability to break off a hierarchy. Um, so you can kind of break pieces off like this and share the root key that's generated at that point with, with someone else um, who you can give control to that part of the tree um, while still maintaining control um, up the hierarchy. Right. Well, one of the other advantages that's important to 
because um, it's that if you actually give people the public key at any point in the hierarchy without having to share private keys with them, they can still use the same mechanism to generate the same public keys that you would be publishing um, from your HD wallet. Um, that's really important because I think there's opportunities in our product for um, compartmentalizing the types of activities you're carrying out and giving a means for the counterparties involved uh, to be able to um, be aware of what public addresses you're using for transaction signing um, with respect to the activities you do with them. So I'm imagining in our wallet, um, we have the concept that you have the wallet, let's say the wallet's like a root node here. And then in, in the app, in an intuitive way, you're able to create categories of activities. Um, now, um, probably the best way of explaining that is if we just say the categories of activities are based on verifier types. So we might have your bank, maybe you've got some, uh, a particular trade account with somebody. So let's say that's bank A, we make it specifically bank A. We've got trade accounts, okay, or a trade account. I don't want to make it plural because it implies that we're breaking the hierarchy down deeper. I'm not doing that, it's just make it, to make it easy to understand. So we've got bank A, trade account A, um, maybe you've got uh, some kind of construction um, activity going on which is involving a lot of people and planning and architecture, uh, structural sign off, um, things like that. So you might have uh, some kind of construction project, Okay, so um, what we're talking about is in the, the hierarchical deterministic wallet functionality, um, sitting behind this, so the user's experience is to create categories of um, activity set. And then for any given activity set or activity category, you can see I'm always exploring vocabulary, so I don't mean to be not very precise, but probably one of the most important things that we're all doing in the industry is trying to explore and then settle on, on uh, a vocabulary that works. And that, that is no mean feat and something we talk about all the time in Zonified is uh, our vocabulary and then hopefully s setting on vocabularies. Hence the term activity. Um, often people say, what is an activity? Because it's so abstract, so general. But an activity, in this case, can be anything that involves multiple people, it's probably got a prescribed workflow in it, and um, uh, uh, people are all electronically signing um, against their roles and entitlements, or um, uh, basically the, 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 the thing that they're doing for that activity, right? Um, so um, we're using it as these categories and then the HD wallet which is producing public private keys that are really signing keys. So you'd be saying that possibly if I transcribed it back to that path mechanism that we might have M0 um, uh, 1 let's say. Uh, is all the keys uh, or the whole hierarchy of signing keys that you would use in your activities with this bank. Uh, and then this here would be, um, you know, dot, dot, that would be two, this would be three, you know, four, five. Then you've got kind of the ability, if you have a single counterparty here, like this is one bank, bank A, this is why I didn't want it to be uh, plural. Um, then um, you can then share with this bank the public address that's generated uh, at this point and they 
can use the same standard, this BIP32 standard on their side to be able to generate all the public keys that you're likely to use. They, they can't uh, create the private keys, there's no security issue here, but it does mean that they have a way of predetermining um, the identities. I don't like to use that term, but let's say these public addresses are representative of your identity. Um, you're able to share with them one public key and say, um, I'll be using a number of signing keys associated with public keys that are you can um, derive from the public key I'm sharing with you. And we are imagining, of course, well, planning that the actual uh, Zonify digital wallet is available for everybody, but some of these concepts on the corporation side, this is where we're hoping to develop uh, products that help those organizations manage these kinds of concepts um, uh, for their customers. Uh, because we can imagine that if they had thousands of customers that are wanting uh, them to use Zonified as a way of protecting and managing their activities, then those organizations uh, are going to need a means to receive the public keys and a means to generate all the likely public keys that that customer is likely to use. Maybe not, they wouldn't generate them all at once, but every time they maybe get a new activity, um, there might be a public, the activity might actually uh, be signed by a new public key and they're able to find uh, which client that's likely to um, be. So the fundamental advantage really I just wanted to discuss that generally, but the fundamental advantage is that at the moment the wallet signs every transaction with exactly the same public address, which uh, I believe in our crude uh, MVP uh, is just M001. <laughs> and it's that public private key pair that's generated. So even though the, the user in our app has created a mnemonic, um, we're only ever using uh, M000, okay. And, and that actually does cause a, a, a bit of a problem anyway, because what has happened in the industry is that this area of the HD wallet path has become used to denote certain products and certain categories. So if you're using my ether wallet and you um, uh, open, you, you provide a, a 12 word mnemonic, um, or you open a hardware wallet, uh, one of the things you'll see in the dialogue that pops up is, uh, I don't know, there's probably uh, maybe, what is it, four times three, 12 to 20 odd uh, different paths with different sets of uses. Um, so different chains might be using a different path um, and, and, and different hardware wallets using a different path. And I know that there is a custom path. So if you've used a custom um, path for your HD wallet, you can actually type this in. And that's important because this path ends up with completely different public private keys, okay? So if you take a mnemonic and you open it but prescribe the wrong path, you will get completely a completely different set of public private keys and that can get a bit confusing um, it certainly did for us when we first experienced it um, uh, a long time ago so that's what I'm saying really this is the plan for the HD wallet support in um, Zonified we're very trivial at the moment we don't really use the HD wallet although the capability is there um, and we hope to be able to allow people to use the categorization of the public private keys to then share them with counterparties and manage those keys with different sets of counterparties. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um, please subscribe. Um, I'm trying to improve my skills at doing the vlogging um, all the time. Uh, so I'm using different techniques. So things will be different you know, as I discover new ways of doing things, until in the end I settle on what is a nice, neat, repeatable pattern that's straightforward for me to do. Uh, any comments, please give them below. If you want me to actually look at something in more detail on here, for example, um, I could use it as uh, the content for, for a, a vlog in the future. Okay, thanks very much.